Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Hello, and thank you all for joining us to learn more about NCCER's automated remote proctoring in partnership with Invigilus. I'm Ken Garcia, Senior Communications Manager here at NCCER, and I'll be your moderator today. Now we're going to discuss the benefits of automated remote proctoring and just how easy it is for you to use. I'm joined today by Nick Dalton, a member of our NCCER remote proctoring team, and Andrew Caldwell, CEO at Invigilus. Some quick housekeeping items first. There will be an opportunity to ask some questions at the end. So if you do have any, please put those in the chat. Stephanie will be keeping an eye on those and we'll be answering them throughout the webinar. And we'll again have an opportunity for some Q&A after presentation. Nick is now going to take the rein here and he's going to give a quick demonstration about how this works and what it is and the benefits. So Nick, take it away. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Welcome everyone and thank you for attending. And I wanted to say, I was looking at the uh, list of attendees and I definitely recognize many names. So I'm glad that you were able to take the time and be with us here today. Um, I'll jump in, I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna kind of go over a little bit about, you know, what the automated remote proctoring is and the process. And uh, hopefully it'll help answer any questions, you know, uh, that you have along the way. And we'll be able to also answer those in the chat and at the end. So um, I'm gonna share my screen really quick. And we'll get into this. There we go. Okay. And so this is the NCCER, and uh, we're partnering with Invigilus uh, for the automated remote proctoring. And um, basically, what we're trying to do is streamline your testing experience. Um, the module testing, you know, it's never, it's been made easier with the remote proctoring, and the students, you know, um, have the flexibility now. And like Andrew was saying, our very first test taker was at lunch in a safety vest in his pickup truck taking a module test. And it was just great. And there was no better way to kick it off than that. So, um, but what we're also stressing is that it allows the instructors to assign the test. You don't have to coordinate those times. You don't have, you know, have to worry about is the test taker going to show up? Did I just waste my time? You know, because there can be some no shows. So, um, and you don't have to say, hey, we need to be at the testing location at this time when that person's just getting off of work. So it definitely um, frees up the instructor time as well. Um, and I'll kind of show you from the instructor side um, how easy it is. So um, after you log into your single sign-on and you go to select your testing location, when you're approved for the automated remote proctoring, you're going to um, see an additional testing location to select. You're going to want to select the um, one with the R dash, and that just stands for remote, um, and it's your training unit. And um, so once you select that, you will assign all of your tests inside of your R dash um, testing location. Now, on this page, I'm sure many of you are familiar with where we're at. I only highlighted group management today just because um, it can help the process you know, setting up your groups. But mostly you're just gonna go into your test assignments if your groups are already set up and you're going to select your tests and you're going to assign it and your job is done. Um, now, once the test taker takes the test, then you can check your score reports and run all of your um, testing reports after that. So it's that simple from the instructor side. You're literally just selecting your testing location and assigning the test. Um, now from the student side, the test taker side, they're still gonna log in the same exact way that they always do from the NCCER homepage. They're gonna click on take module test. They're gonna enter their ID and their last name, and they're gonna select the, their assigned test that you had assigned to them from that remote proctoring location. Um, after that, they're going to see something a little bit different. This is where Invigilus comes in, and they're going to see a screen that shows um, them, ask them if they're ready to take the exam. So once they've read through the instructions here, it just lets them know to grab a snack, drink some water, use the restroom if needed. Um, and it also says, please review the video to preview your, you know, to make sure your face is well lit and clearly visible. So once they're done reading that, they're gonna click this little button down here that says take exam. And then they're gonna see a screen pop up. And this is where the actual, the brilliance of Invigilus comes in 
is instead of downloading a software or having something like that, this is actually browser and browser. So this is our testing system right here, the blue bar down to the blue bar. So Invigilus runs off here to the left and at the top, it kind of shows them their progression. So uh, the reason why I highlighted this X and the stop recording button is if a user's on a laptop, the testing can be a little bit hard to read. Before they start the test, when they're on their uh, security statement, they can click this X and this panel will actually slide over to the left and disappear. And it actually makes the testing screen larger. So it'll help them um, navigate the testing session a little bit easier. So um, with that, that was, you know, it's that simple that we streamlined it for you. You can just assign the test. It's kind of basically set it and forget it. But, you know, once they're done testing, you can go back and, um, and check their score reports. Hey, Nick, so, uh, someone did yeah. put in the question, will they need to set up new groups or does the system copy them over from our TU? Great question. And they do need to set up a brand new groups. Um, it does not carbon copy over. Um, it's a fresh testing location. So everything that they're doing in the automated remote proctoring side from the group management is going to be all fresh and everything that they're doing from the test assignments section is going to be all fresh. So they'll need to add their tests in there. Great question. Any other questions? So nothing that has popped up yet. However, we are keeping an eye on things. And again, if you do have questions, you can pop them in the Q&A or you can throw them into the chat. Uh, someone did ask, uh, do they need to select the recording button or is it automatically recording? Um, they will select the start recording button where the stop recording button was. I can actually go back and um, show you really quick. Um, sure. It's in the same exact place. And the, instead of showing the start recording, they're going to select stop recording or they're going to select start recording. It's right here. This green button says start recording. They'll click that. The test will launch and then it's it's recording. So before that, they're going to show their ID. And um, that way, we can, when we go to make sure that it's the correct test taker taking the test so we can line it up. So we do have that stop gap in place. The test takers will need to show a valid photo ID. It does. Yeah, you know, it's, if it's a student ID, that's OK, too. Sure. And, you know, we're talking about this recording and Andrew, maybe you can expand a little bit more about why this is so important and, and the fact that it creates a secure testing and also to make sure that the testing is being done honestly. Yeah, absolutely. And what this does is it validates the, the end user's experience, right? So imagine if there was no proctoring available, uh, what, how do you say that this has validity, right? So this meets or exceeds accrediting body standards in the fact that we're using facial detection, which is different than facial recognition. So each face has a, a standard pixel size. So we're just looking for the size of the pixel. We have audio being recorded. We're tracking to see if their mouse movement is it going off. So it's an incredibly secure environment, but more importantly, uh, it just comes down to ease of use. And, and to be quite frank, I was telling uh, one of my neighbors the other day, it, 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 you compare this to watching paint dry, right? So I, I'd rather watch paint dry than watch someone take a test. It's let's just be frank. That's boring. I don't like doing that. Uh, but at the end of the day, a paint dry is better because at least I made some effort towards it. But think about the educational impact that you can have with a tool like this. Now, if you think about it, I have all these learners in my classroom. I can say to them, hey, look, you can take this extra hour to take your exam, or I can spend another hour with you educating, right? What, what kind of impact could we have if we spent just a little bit more time educating? Let the users go home, take their exam when they're ready, wherever they're ready. So that's really the big impact. And uh, Nick, you know, we, are, we do offer basic remote proctoring. So how does this differ from the basic remote proctoring? So with the basic remote proctoring, the uh, proctor has to submit a request for the testing session, and they have to make sure that they, well, first they have to get approved. Um, so they go through that process. Then they submit their request for that testing session. Then they have to record this testing session in gallery view, then submit it to us for review. And so there's, a, you know, a lot of like many more hurdles to go through with the Automated remote proctoring, they're assigning the tests 
and the test takers are logging in at their, you know, at a convenient time for themselves and taking the test. That's it. They don't need to submit the videos. They don't have to ask for the submission um, to record or do any of that. And they don't need to store the files. Everything's stored within Vigilus um, for 30 days, which is great. So if we need to go back and review anything, we can do that. But um, it just streamlines it so much more. And I think we got you on mute. I did it. I knew yes. it was going to happen. Right. Uh, there was a question I briefly saw um, asking about whether or not, I, if someone isn't honest and the system sees that, does that show on their score? Report, sorry, score report. Um, so if we catch someone cheating and you know we can verify that, um, we do review that and then um, we investigate that. And at that time, we'll determine what the right course of action is. Um, it could go, you know, one of two ways. Maybe they were just doing something that they didn't know, like they had a cell phone visible or something like that, but they weren't using that to cheat. Um, it could possibly end up in a just, hey, you can't do that from here on out. Or if it's very flagrant, um, you know, we would actually uh, possibly revoke the test and report them for cheating. So that's something we do in the audit department. Um, and each case is reviewed individually. So it's just on a case by case basis, but it can go from as light as, hey, let's not do that anymore to they're going to get revoked and they're going to, it's going to be um, cheating on their record. So, yeah. Um, one, uh, one question here is, do they have to register each training location for automated remote proctoring? Yes, they do. Yep. So um, now we have, you know, we, each testing location, if that's where the student is normally testing, that's fine. There has been an instance with a large company throughout a state where the, you know, the student all take it through one testing location. So again, that's another one that's on a case by case basis. So, um, you know, reach out to myself, Stephanie, anyone here at NCCER, and we can help you determine what's the best course of action for that. Um, but each testing location does need to have it its own uh, training unit, unless we can figure out, you know, a simpler solution for you. Um, someone mentioned they're having issues where students are not selecting end test. Uh, currently he has them reopen it, approve, and then he goes in, uh, this person approves the student. How will that be handled within the system? So within the system, um, Invigilus automatically um, speaks with our testing system and it automatically um, approves the test. It authorizes that test. So if the student doesn't click the end test button correctly, they can re-click on that same test and it'll automatically authorize them. And generally the timer will have timed out. So it will end the test correctly. If not, the student can click end test. Is there a training for instructors on how to use this system? Yes, there is. Yep. So we have a guide. And like I said, you know, we just went through the overview and the training is for the instructors is just making sure you're selecting the correct testing location to assign your test at. Um, if you want testing system training, we also have that. And I believe Stephanie's going to get the link for that up in um, our chat log. If not, it is on our website. If you just type in the Google search bar on the top right, you can search for testing system training and it'll pull up a link or it'll pull you to a page that you can get the link. And Andrew, can you talk a little bit more about the browser and browser technology and sure. how that just makes it so much easier? Yeah, yeah. So when I, I've run most of the remote proctoring companies out there, and the challenge that we had uh, from a technical support issue was in order to lock down a computer seven to eight years ago, you needed to have a browser extension. It was the only way to do it. Uh, the technology has evolved today where you don't need to do that. And so what we've done is built it into an iframe. So if you can consider us to be a movie theater and we can show whatever movie that you want on that movie theater. We just happen to show an exam on it. And so we wrap it so that there is no browser extension because it's specifically financial institutions, there's uh, large construction organizations have firewalls. So if you have to have a browser extension, 
our competitors' uh, platforms will not work. And so our the way we built this was with the user in mind saying, look, you should be able to, we've done it in a moving car and I don't recommend that to anybody, right? So please don't go and go, I can take my test while I'm driving, do not do that, right? We, we uh, now that travel's back in, we'll do it in an airplane to see if we can continue that. But our goal is to be really the first remote proctoring company in space. And if you've got a browser extension, there's no way that that's going to download quick enough. So well, that's why we did it the way we did it. Uh, not so much a question, but uh, more of a statement. Uh, David says they've started using this system and it has saved a lot of time. So that's that's good news to hear. Uh, yep. Is there a cost? How does the cost work on this, Nick? So there is a three dollar fee on top that's additional to the um, testing fee. Um, and so that is for each test, um, whether it's pass or training recommended. And that's just to cover our costs and the costs of Invigilus because they're hosting and they're also storing the data and the videos. And um, so that just, that fee helps kind of, you know, take care of all those um, backend um, technology services that are being offered. Okay, um, I'm not seeing any more questions. Do we have any more questions? If so, again, please definitely put them in the chat. Uh, Stephanie is keeping up today and she's put in some links in the chat for those of you who are on a, in attendance. So you can get some uh, more information about automated remote proctoring um, as well as making sure that you're able to get your sites registered. So um, since I'm not seeing any additional questions right now, uh, Nick, do you have anything you'd like to add? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we're going to send out uh, within the next week a brief survey um, about the automated remote proctoring and just get everybody's thoughts um, and questions. You know, it's going to be a brief like five, six question survey. Um, and feel free at any time if you have any questions um, or have any issues, um, troubleshooting, just reach out to us directly. Um, and myself, like I said, Stephanie, um, anyone on the customer service team, and uh, we are always here and glad to help with everyone. So I just want to say thank you very much for attending, and um, thank I wanted to thank Andrew as well uh, for being a part of this. We really appreciate that. Excited about the opportunity. Uh, very quick, we did have a few more questions pop in. Do they have to fill Ooh. out the smart sheet for each training unit? Uh, yes, they do. Yep. And so each training unit will be a different uh, smart sheet form. And do they need to register each site or just instructors at sites? Um, just the site. They do not need to register instructors. They're, this is actually, the instructors are the, they're just assigning tests. So since the, they're not a part of the proctor process, um, the instructors only assign the test so they don't need to register those instructors. And can we use this for students that are absent on the testing day and have the other students test in person? Absolutely. Perfect. All right. Well, um, I think that's going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Uh, we do really appreciate your time, Andrew and Nick and Stephanie in the background helping answer those questions. Thank you so much. Uh, we did record this webinar, so it will be available on our website, nccer.org. There's also more information on there about automated remote proctoring. And again, if you do have any questions, Nick and Stephanie would be definitely able to answer those for you. So Andrew, Nick, Stephanie, thank you so much. Those of you who attended, Really appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day.